How many knows we're not made to handle any kind of glory? That's right. Woo, when we start to Come try on. and take on praise and worship, everything crumbles. Yep. You don't believe me? Look at Lucifer himself. Lucifer himself, who was the worship leader of heaven, he walked in the coals and right before God, and he would lead worship. His whole body was an instrument, and he would lead the most beautiful, the most amazing worship. Oh, it was the most beautiful thing, and his whole body would glisten like diamonds and crystals when it came before the light of God. Come on. And when he would do this, he at one point in time, he had the thought that I could be like God. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. He had the thought that why am I giving so much worship away when I could be taking it in? Uh oh. Why am I doing so much when it, I deserve the glory? I could be like him. I, I, I deserve the glory like he does. I, look how beautiful I am. Look at all the great things that I can do. Even when I make a move, oh my goodness, music comes out of me. I deserve worship. But at that moment in time, he started to crumble. Why? Because we were never made or designed to take on any kind of worship. Go ahead. Go ahead. We were never designed. We were never processed. We were never made to take any kind of glory. Why? Because we were meant to point the way to glory. We were meant to give glory to God and God alone. Go ahead. That's good. When we start to think that it's for our glory, we start to break down. Amen. Look at all the preachers who have fell in some kind of scandal. Yep. Why? Because they began to be prideful. Yeah. And Come pride on. comes before destruction. Yeah. It does. A haughty spirit comes before a fall. And so when we do that, we fall. Why? Because we were never made to handle that kind of stuff. Only God and God alone is made to handle that kind of worship and that kind of praise. He is alone is made to handle the glory. And that's why we point to Jesus. That's why we glorify Him. Because He is worthy of the praise. That's why we were singing glory to the Lamb. Why? Because He deserves the praise. And we are pointing to the main character. We are pointing to the star of the show. We are pointing to Jesus. Come on. We're lifting up His name. And can I tell you that if you're lifting up anything other than Christ, then you're sadly mistaken. Yes, come on, come on. We are made to lift up the name of Jesus. Jesus said, if I be high and lifted up, then I would draw all men unto yes, me. Yes. He come said on. that if, when you lift me up, I begin to draw. That's just how it works. That's the equation. Yeah. When we lift up the name of Jesus, when we lift him high up, he begins to draw people to him. And yeah. thank God that when we begin to lift up the name of Jesus, he doesn't just draw others, he draws us. Yes, come on. Oh come my on. goodness, come that on. when we lift up the name of Jesus, he doesn't just draw everybody else, but he'll draw ourselves unto him. Yes. So if come you're on. needing God's presence, begin to lift up the name of Jesus. Yes. If you want to get closer to God, then begin to lift up the come name on. of Jesus. If you want his presence, and his leading and his guiding in your life and lift up the name of Jesus yeah. because when we lift him up he draws all men unto him so in revival why is this important because revival all points to him yes. Come on. If, if, if revival is pointed on anything else then it fails that's, right. that's why you see a lot of these revivals that have happened in the past they begin to fail why because they started pointing in some other direction other than Jesus I've seen revivals that were that were crumbled because they began to commercialize it. Yep. Go ahead. They started selling CDs and started selling, you all come here, get your, Browns, get your Brownsville this, get your Azusa that, get your Toronto this, and they began to commercialize it. And when they did that, guess what? They started pointing away from Jesus and pointing to something else. Go ahead. Were they a move of God? Absolutely, but they could have been sustained. Because God does not send revival for it to fade away. That's right. That's right. See, we think that if God sends a spurt of revival and we feel good for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, and then it, then it fades away and that's just life. No, God does not send revival for it not to be sustained. Ooh, that's a word for somebody. That's Come on. Good. It is not meant to just fade away after time. It is meant to be sustained. Yes. I don't believe in momentum. I believe in God keeping his hand on us. Come what on. is momentum? Momentum is when I take something, I push it, and then I let it go. That is when revival begins to fail. Is when they start to play on momentum. See, mo God does not do a momentum because, see, I'm here to tell you that I never want God's hand off of me. Come on. That's why most revival is never sustained because he pushes us and then we say, okay, we got enough momentum, let us go. But I never want God's hand to be lifted off of us. Why? I never want Jesus' hand to be lifted off of me. I want it to be sustained. And so Jesus needs to be the main character because after all, it's all for him anyway. Yeah, come on. 
It's oh. pointing to Jesus, not to commercialize it, not to some preacher, not to some singer, not to some church, but oh. to Jesus and Jesus alone. Go ahead. And we lift up his name so that why everybody is clearly known that we are lifting up Jesus and we are pointing the way to the cross. We are pointing the way to the main character. And the main character, when you research it in any sort of way, you find out that the main character gives the story purpose. Amen. It gives the story right. purpose. Why is this important when it comes to revival? Without Jesus, there is no purpose in revival. Go ahead. That's right. Without right. the Son of God, there is no purpose in revival. Can I tell you, without the Son of God, there's no purpose in this church. That's right. Listen, I can go to the I can go to a hunting club and still get the same thing as a social club. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I can go to the bowling alley and get the same thing as if see, because without Jesus, then we're just getting together and having fun. Yeah. We're just getting together and dancing around. We're just getting together and enjoying each other's company and enjoying each other's conversation. Listen, I could do that anywhere. I don't have to come here. But thank God that when we have Jesus, it all makes sense. It all becomes effective. And see, Jesus gives our story purpose. Go ahead. Yes, if, he does. if we don't have Jesus, we don't have purpose. None. Right. Ooh, that's so good. We yeah. don't have purpose if we don't have Jesus. Come on, come on. And Jesus brings purpose to our story. Yes. He brings a message. So he brings good. hope. Brings yeah. peace. Yeah. Brings joy. Brings everything that I need. Hallelujah. Because he brings purpose to the story. Yes. Yeah. And he brings purpose to revival. How many believe that? Amen. Yeah. Come on. Come on. So we got God the director. We got Jesus the star of the show. The main character. So what is the Holy Ghost? And the span of all this. What is his role in revival? What is his role in our lives? Mm -hmm. See, when it comes down to it, the Holy Ghost, I believe, is the supporting role. The supporting role. So what is a supporting role? A supporting role is somebody who supports the main character. Because if you just have the main character, it doesn't give... The power, it doesn't give anything to the story. When you look up what a supporting role is, a supporting role is the one who adds urgency, motivation, and power to the story. Uh -huh. Ooh, that's good. Come on, Listen come to on. that. Uh, it, the supporting role adds urgency, motivation, and power to the story that Ooh, is being good. told. So when we think about the Holy Ghost as a supporting role to Jesus, it adds urgency. Yep. Woo! It adds urgency to everything. See, when you when you are having a sense of revival, when you have that urgency down in your spirit, and when you have an urgency about something, that means it has to be done. Yep. If you have an urgency about going shopping, guess what? You need to go shopping. If you, uh, my wife was like, hey, man, hallelujah. Yes. When you have an urgency about that, then you go do it. If you have an urgency about your window being fixed in your house, then guess what? You'll begin to do it. Yeah. You'll Come begin on. to Amen. bring that to Come action. On. You'll Come begin on. to start to make that thing happen. So when I think about the Holy Ghost being an urgency to the story, it is putting the hunger and the urgency down in my heart to see revival come to pass, to see Jesus being preached, to see in the kingdom being added to. He gives me urgency to see it done. Yeah. Come on, come on. What, how, why is that important? Because without urgency, we will sit in the pew and do nothing. That's it. Go ahead. Come, come on. on now. That's the problem with the church today. We have no urgency about Go the ahead. time. We have no urgency about being the last days. We have no urgency to see souls saved. Come on. If we would have an urgency down in our heart to see people saved, oh my goodness, the church would change. Come on now. We would see more people getting saved. We would see that, listen, if there would be a church that had urgency, there would not be a seat left in this house. Come on, come on. We would have to bring out chairs. We'd have to hang them on a nail. We'd have to put them in an overflow room. Why? Because we are being urgency in our heart to say that my neighbor might die tomorrow and they're going to go to hell if I don't do something about it. Oh, my children might go to hell if I don't preach Jesus to them. We need an urgency in the church today. Yeah, yeah. Come on, yeah. come on, Amen. come on. We need an urgency. And who gives us that? The Holy Ghost. Yep. Yeah. Through the gifts and the, the fruit of the Spirit, He gives us that urgency that something has to be done. Somebody's got to preach. Somebody's got to sing. Somebody's got to pray. Come on. Somebody's got to hug somebody. Somebody's got to love somebody. Come on. Somebody's got to do something to see a soul saved. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on. He gives us an urgency 
It also gives us some motivation. Right. Uh -huh. yes. Come on. Ooh, the Holy Come on. Ghost will motivate you like yes. nobody else. Yes. <laughs> he will motivate you into yes. doing the things that God has called you to do. Yes. How many knows that sometimes it's not easy doing the will of God? That's right. It's not easy taking the right road. It's not easy walking out the word of God. It's not easy to walk out the words that he has spoken to us. It's not easy. But guess what? When I have the Holy Ghost, he gives me motivation. Yes. To uh -huh. do the things that God has called me to do. Yes, he does. Why? Because the Bible says to taste and see that the Lord is good. Why does the Bible say that? Because once you taste it and you find out it's good, you want more. Yeah. yeah. Come on. You want more. You get motivated. You say, I want some more of that. And when you start to experience the Holy Ghost and you start to experience the presence and the Spirit of God, it gives you a motivation to want more. To not just stay in the, the, the water only ankle deep but to go knee deep and to go waist deep and to go head deep and to go completely submerged in the river and in the presence of God he come gives on. you the motivation to want more right. come on he wants to give us the motivation to seek out more of God and it also gives us power who thank you Jesus. Go ahead. Yeah. it gives us power to do the things that God has called us to do so not only are we urgent about the situation not only we now have the motivation but now we have the power to do what God has Go called ahead. us to yes. do how many knows that when God calls you he'll equip you yes he will he doesn't always call the equip but he equips the call thank you Jesus Come on. thank you Jesus and I don't got to be good enough then I don't got to be on. smart enough then I don't got to have a certain kind of money and a certain kind of pedigree to do this but he equips me when he calls me Go ahead. and by doing that he gives me the power to do the things that he calls to do right. Jesus said I I want you to tarry into, Jeru into Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Endued with the Holy Ghost dwelling and filling you on the inside. It gives you the power to do what God calls yeah. you to do. Yes. See, if, Jesus, if Peter did not have the Holy Ghost, then we would not see what was experienced in Acts chapter 2. Right. When thousands of people were saved by the power of God, yes. Come on. if he did not have the Holy Ghost, he would not have been able to do that. Come on, right. come on, come on. I don't read anywhere in the scriptures where there was a mass coming to God like this in any of the other scriptures come before. Come on. You never read where one person stands up and says, listen, you need to come to God and you literally see thousands upon thousands of people getting saved. But when the Holy Ghost came, one man who was a nothing and a nobody, just a fisherman, that's all he knew how to do. As a matter of fact, he was an imperfect fisherman. Amen. Uh, he on. would cuss, he would fuss, he would make wrong decisions. Sometimes he'd even pull out a knife and cut some dude's ear off. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. So if you think, well, I'm too bad, listen, have you cut somebody's ear off? Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Whew, not yet. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But through the power of the Holy Ghost, he was able to give an altar call where thousands of people were saved. Yeah. Thousands of people were saved. Why? Because he was endued with power. If Paul did not have the power of the Holy Ghost, then could he have withstood the winds and the rains when he was out there on the boat getting tossed to and fro? When the ship was wrecked and he landed upon an island, would he be able to withstand that? Would he be able to stand in front of Caesars and people of influence and be able to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ would he have the power I would say no as great of a man of God as Paul was without the Holy Ghost he would not be as powerful right, as he was. Right. no way it was the Holy Ghost that gave him the urgency the motivation and the power to accomplish the story that's right to see the story that much listen the if when you read about the Holy Ghost man it adds so much power and so much motivation and so much urgency to the right. story yeah and he does this because that's his role to add motivation and power and urgency to tell the story of who the main character yes how many knows that the, the Holy Ghost, according to John 16, chapter 14, he said that the Holy Ghost will come and he will glorify me. Yeah. Jesus said he will glorify me. He will point the way to me. He will be the one who says that's the one. That's the one who we need to focus on. That's the one who we need to seek out. That's the one on, who we need to live on, like. He points the way and he glorifies Jesus. Yes. That's the, part, that's the thing of a supporting role. It points the way to the main character. Yeah. It adds power to the main character. It adds motivation, urgency. It adds all this to point the way to Christ. Yeah. Yes. 
And through the Holy Spirit, I'm here to tell you that just because the Holy Ghost is a supporting role does not make Him any less important. That's right. The supporting roles are often more important than even the main character in, most, in some stories. Sometimes the supporting roles are the most popular. Sometimes people even win awards for being yeah. the supporting actress or supporting actor. Why? Because they add more power to the story. They are just as important as the main character. It makes them important. And I'm here to tell you that just as important as Jesus is to revival, so is the Holy Ghost. Yes, amen. I'm here to even bold enough to say that you cannot have revival without the Holy Ghost. You can. Right. I'm here to tell you that you cannot add to the kingdom without the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. You cannot see soul saved without the Holy Ghost. When we look at Azusa, when we look at Cane Ridge, when we look at Brownsville, when we look at Toronto, when we look at all these revivals, you will see that the Holy Ghost was very, very present. Yeah. And I'm here to tell you that without the Holy Ghost, you cannot have revival. Yep, right. You say, well, what, we just got Jesus and that's all we need. As blessed and as awesome as that is, no, that is not true. Right. You need the Holy Ghost. Yes, you do. Come on, come on. Come on. You need him, and I can't, I'm here to even stay at, to say in boldness that you cannot have revival without the Holy Ghost. Right. Because yeah. the word says that the Spirit draws them yeah. to be saved. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. How can a man be saved unless the Spirit draws That's them? Right. That's right. How can a man be saved unless the Spirit pulls on their heart? As much as I love Pastor Howard's preaching, but it is not the, the profoundity of his messages that draws people to get saved. No. Right. no. It is not the eloquent words that he can say. It is not the, 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 the messages and the things that he pulls out of the word of God that pulls somebody to get saved. It is only by the spirit of God yeah. Come on. that somebody is saved. Come on. As Come much on. as I love to preach, as much as I like to study and pull things out of the word Come of God, on. no matter how good or how bad I think I do, Come it on. is only by the spirit of God that somebody is saved. Yep. Come on. I, I would like to pat myself on the back and say it, it has something to do with me, but it ain't. Hallelujah, I'm just a vessel that the power of God flows through. And that's all I ever want to be. That's all I ever want to be is the vessel that the oil flows through. Go ahead. But it's the Spirit of God that draws them yes. in. Yes, come on. How do I know that? It's because when somebody gets saved, when they really grab a hold of it. Come on. Oftentimes it feels like something is squeezing your insides. Go ahead. <laughs> it feels like if I don't do this, then something is going to happen. If I don't make this decision, I'm about to burst on the inside. Come on. If pastor doesn't give me the opportunity to raise my hand and say, I want to accept Jesus into my life. If he doesn't open up the altars so that I can come and pray and see God, then I am going to explode. What is that? That's the spirit drawing somebody. Yeah. Come on. That's the spirit giving you a what? An urgency saying, you must get saved. Get saved now. Come the on. spirit of the Lord is calling you to come home. Come on. Come on. Come on. The spirit draws them to be saved and if revival is the adding of the kingdom and we can only add to the kingdom by the preaching of Jesus and them getting saved then we need the Holy Ghost to see revival come on come on come on go ahead he is so necessary because without the spirit drawing them to be saved then how can we have revival yes sure we can have a, a series of services right. sure we can run around this room Go ahead. We can roll on the floor. We can we can speak in tongues till we turn blue. Go ahead. But it isn't revival until souls are saved. That's right. And lives are changed. Yes. And lives are turned around by the Come glory on. of God. Right. And that can only happen through the Holy Ghost drawing them in to be yeah. saved. That's right. Come on. When we read in Acts chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. It says that in the last day, say it, God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Yes. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will have visions. Your old men will have dreams. And upon my servants and upon my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit. And they shall prophesy. What is he saying? He's saying revival is when I pour out my spirit. Come on. What is that? When I pour out the Holy Ghost. Come on. What we see in Acts chapter 2 is what Joel was prophesying. Yeah. He was saying, I'm going to pour out the Spirit. What is the Spirit? The Spirit is the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And when he pours out his Spirit, guess what happens? Just like in Acts chapter 2, when he pours out his Spirit, people get saved. Yeah. Right. And the kingdom is added to. And we see miracles, signs, wonders. Yeah. People begin to prophesy. People begin to have visions. Come people on. begin to have dreams. Why? Because he's pouring out his spirit. Yeah. So revival is God pouring out his spirit. 
so yes. that people can be saved. Come on. Yeah. Come on. And the only way we can ever experience Go revival ahead. is through the Spirit being poured out. That's right. And through the Spirit drawing people yes. to be saved. Church, I'm here to tell you at the very last message of ghost stories, I'm here to tell you that you need the Holy Ghost. Yes. Uh -huh. Come on, come on. Because the Holy Ghost gives us an urgency, gives us motivation, gives us power. Yes. To see revival come to pass. Yes. Come on. It's to see his glory come in like never before. I wish to God that we would get a hunger. A hunger. Yes. An come urgency. Yes. For the Holy Ghost. Yes. To be ever present. Not just in our Sunday services. But in our daily lives. Yes. yes. Come on. Not just on Sunday. Listen. If you're just living a Sunday. A Sunday kind of salvation. Then you are. You need to grab a hold of it. And That's you need right. to get, listen. Like I said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Give yes. it a try every day of the week. And man, you'll be drawn in. Amen. There's yeah. not one day that goes by where I don't try my very hardest to spend time in my prayer closet. Yes. And seek God and allow the Holy Ghost to come in yes. and speak to me and move me. And, and, and clarify and, and declassify some things and, and give me revelation. There's not a day that goes by come on. that I try to do that. Whether it's for a minute. Or whether it's for an hour. Or whether it's for several hours. I do my hardest to seek Him every day. Why? Because I have an urgency. Come on. Come on. I have an urgency. The Holy Ghost not just be a side role. But, but be somebody who is ever present in every single time Come that we meet together. And not just every time that we meet together. But when we go to Taco Bell. When we go to Walmart. When we go out. Listen, revival is not to stay in the church. But to bleed out into the marketplace. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Come on. It's Come not on. just to stay in these walls. When yeah. we begin to try and keep it in these walls. Is when we fail. Yeah. Come but on. when we start to experience the fire of the Holy Ghost in here. It is to bleed out into the marketplace. Come on. Come on. That's what I love about the upper room. The upper room started in the upper room. But ended out in the marketplace. Uh -huh. That's right. Where the lost and the hurt and the broken were were the people who had no idea who Jesus was right. or the sacrifice he made. It started in the upper room, but it bled out into the marketplace. Why? Because they had an urgency to seek the things that Jesus told them about. I wish to God that we would get back to the place where we have an urgency to seek God in our upper room, but not just keep it in our upper room, but bleed out into the marketplace. Yes. Come on, come on. To see people saved. Yes. Yes. Come on. I heard the story of a pastor in Chattanooga. His name's Kevin Wallace. He said one day I was, I, they were, listen, they've been experiencing a spirit of revival for years now. They've been seeing people saved for years. They've seen, I've watched their services just in the last couple months and seen deaf people healed. I've seen blind healed. I've Come seen on. people get saved by the hundreds in a yes. service. Come on. I've seen the power of God move so so strongly and the presence of God was so raw in their services that people couldn't even move because of the presence of God. You say that's a powerful serve, but listen to this. He said, I was one day, I, was, I wasn't feeling very good. I had a, a doctor had called me in some medicine. He said, so I went and I got in my car. I went down to the local Walgreens. And he said, I was going to pick up my medicine. He said, I pulled in and I thought I seen my youth pastor's truck in the driveway in the, uh, of the Walgreens. And he said, that's weird. I wonder why he's here. He said, then I began to look around after I picked up my medication. I looked around in the parking lot and I seen my son and several of the youth walking around talking to people. And I, I went up to him. I said, my goodness, what, what is going on? I thought my son was supposed to be in school. So we went up to the youth pastor and he was kind of mad. He said, what's going on? He said, why, why is all the kids here in the parking lot? His youth pastor said, Pastor, he said, uh, actually, it was your son that started all this. He said, what do you mean? He said, your son called me and said, I feel like the Lord's calling of some of our youth to go down to the local Walgreens. And he said, this is, he said that was kind of strange. So, but he's like, if, I, I felt the Lord when he said that. So he said, I got them all together and we went down to the local Walgreens. He said, well, that's awesome. He said, so what happened? What, what's the point of all this? Basically, is what he was saying. And he said that the youth pastor said, Pastor, you're never going to believe this. He said, we went into the, the, the Walgreens, and there was a man there that had a, a growth on the side of his neck. And they, were, and they said that he was getting medication there for that growth on the side of his neck. His son went up to him and said, sir, can we pray for you? 
Because I believe God can heal you. And this guy said, absolutely, you may pray for me. They said they laid hands on him. This was just a bunch of teenage boys. Come on. Went and laid hands on this person. And they said, and instantly, that man's growth had gone away and went down and he was instantly healed. Why? Because they were taking what was in the sanctuary, what was in the upper room and was taking it out to the marketplace to see people touch and thank God through that healing that man had given his life to the Lord. So what are you saying Pastor James? Because somebody had an urgency just to go down to the local Walgreens and pray for somebody and seek the Lord and do what God had pushed them and what the Holy Ghost had pushed him to do. A soul was added to the kingdom and a miracle had taken place. Why? Because somebody let the Holy Ghost take control. Yes, come on. Come and see on. revival taken out to the marketplace. We need an urgency to see something like this happen yes. again. We need an urgency to say, God, don't just use me in a church service, but use me out there. Yeah, come on. God, don't just use me when I'm here praising the Lord, but use me when I'm in line at the Walmart or Myers. Use me when I'm seeking God. Use me when I'm out there shopping for groceries or at the doctor's office or getting my medication. God, don't just use me here, but Holy Ghost, speak to me out there. Yes, Why? So come that on. we can see revival and see our city go up in flames for the glory of the Lord. Because yes. I believe that if the church will grab a hold of a hunger and an urgency and a motivation for the Holy Ghost to move, He will give us the power to see our city saved. Go ahead. But we have to have an urgency for the Holy Ghost and a hunger for the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes. So what I'm going to do this is, is every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm just going to do it like this. I'm going to have this altar call.